Hey everybody, this is the Algebra 2 video on simplifying rational expressions. All right, so if you're not able to make it to class, this will be a good little quick guide on how to do some of those problems, okay? So first thing I'm going to have you do is if we're looking at an expression, like I want you to simplify. Okay, I just came up with a random number, 4,572 over 68, or 64, I'm sorry. I don't know why. I mean, I would be okay with 68. I don't really care which we, what we multiply by. So what we do whenever we're simplifying these, you guys, is we're coming up with common factors, okay? Common factors are things that multiply or divide evenly into something else, okay? So I'm searching for my calculator because, yeah, I could totally find the decimal for this, but I want to make sure it's in lowest terms without being a mixed number. So I know that both of these I can divide by 2, right? Because they have a factor of 2 in them. They're both even. So 4572 divided by 2 gives me, what, 2286. And that's over. I know that 64 divided by 2 is 32. Oh, there's another 2 in there. I can take another factor of 2. And honestly, I could have taken 4 out of the big one, but I'm just kind of um, making this easier for myself. Divide this by 2. This is 11. 43 divide this by 2 it's 16 now 16 just has 4 and 4 and that's all twos there's not any fours in here so this is simplified that's down that is it um and 143 divided by 16 gives me 71.4375 that should be the same as 4572 divided by 64 boom they're exactly the same now you might be like miss henschel why are we doing that that is so easy because we're doing that here as well we're going to combine this idea with my next one. So my next question for you guys is, what are the two things in math that you cannot do? What are two things in math you cannot do? And I feel like we talked about this maybe a little bit whenever we were talking about the domain of a function, because this is directly um, related to that. So one thing we cannot do, we can't divide by zero. You can't have zero in the denominator. It's the same thing. It means the same thing. And the second thing we cannot do, you guys, is we cannot take the square root of a negative number. We can't do that. Um, what you're not going to be happy about is that eventually we can. <laughs> but for now, we can't. Okay? So, um, in my next qu group of questions, my question is, what can't x be? All right. So, here's my first one. Um, my first one 7 over x. What can't x be? Well, we said that you can't divide by 0, right? So that would mean x cannot be equal to 0 because this is the denominator. So even if I want to add you can't divide by 0, or you could say the denominator cannot equal 0. Okay, that's the same thing. Okay, so my denominator can't equal 0. That means my denominator x cannot be equal to 0. <laughs> There you go. What can x be? x cannot be equal to 0. That, um, it should be kind of on a slant. That equals with a line through it. This means no. Okay, second one. We have 3x over x plus 10. So if I was in class, I'd be like, what can x be? And I would go through all these few kids, and I'd ask them, and I'm asking them. Um, and I'm hoping many of you guys can say, oh, x can't be negative 10. Why? Because negative 10 makes the denominator 0. This denominator cannot be 0. So we solve it like if it was equal to 0. x cannot be equal to negative 10. All right? Which makes sense. Negative 10 plus 10 is 0, and that's a no-no in the math world. Okay, my last one. 4 over x squared minus 49 cannot equal 0. All right. So, oh my goodness, what's that square? That's a quadratic. All right, how do we solve quadratics? Even if it's not equal to 0, we'll do it the same way as if it equals 0. So I'm going to factor it, right? So if I say x squared minus 49 can't be equal to 0, x squared minus 49, you guys, that is a difference of squares. These are the ones I know I get comments sometimes, and kids are like, oh, I love those. Those are awesome. So if x plus 7 cannot be equal to 0, and x minus 7 cannot be equal to 0, subtract 7, x cannot be equal to negative 7, which makes sense because negative 7 squared is 49 minus 49, that's 0, and that's a no-no in the math world. And if I add 7, x cannot be equal to 7. That's the other thing it can't be equal. That makes sense because x squared, 7 squared is 49 minus 49, that's 0, and again, that's a no-no. So x cannot be negative 7 or 7. So you're like, okay, that's super duper easy. 
Well, guess what? It is not going to be in just a second. Okay, we're going to take these two ideas and mix them together. So simplify the following. And find the restricted value or values for x. So what can't x be? So I found the restricted values up here, you guys. So I'm taking these two ideas. Okay, here's my first one, okay? x squared minus 2x minus 35 over x squared minus 9x plus 14. All right? So I want to know what my x's can't be, and I want to simplify them. So when I'm thinking about the two ideas that I've done here, you guys, here I'm looking for, right up here, I look for factors that were the same. They both had 2's in, I divided 2's out. Here there's another 2, so I divided 2 out. We kind of talked, we could have actually taken 4 out because they had a factor of 4 in common in the big guy. All right? So the thing is, I need to know what factors I have in common here. You guessed it. We get to factor here, you guys. Before you even find your restricted values, we want a factor. So I'm going to factor the top. Factor in the numerator, there's not a GCF. X squared is an X and an X. 35, uh, I need factors of 35 that add or subtract to negative 2. That's 7 and 5, right? Because there's nothing in front of the X squared, so this is an easy one. To get negative 2, I'd need a negative 7X plus a 5X. That works, and that makes that. That works. Okay, in the denominator, X squared is X and X. The factors of 14 that add or subtract to negative 9, um, that'd be 2 and 7. And if they're both negative, wouldn't that give me that negative 9? Negative 7 minus 2. Boom, got it. All right, so here's what you have to do first. First, before we simplify these factors out, we want to say what x cannot be equal. So if I look at my denominator, I have x minus 2, that can't be equal to 0. And x minus 7, that also cannot be equal to 0. So I'd add 2. x cannot be equal to 2. And I'm going to add 7. x cannot be equal to 7. All right? So keep that in mind that x can be anything in the world but 2 or 7 because they make the original one equal to zero. All right, now we're going to simplify it. Here's our giant one. We were just talking about giant ones in the accelerated group, so I know you guys know about giant ones too. So this simplifies to the x plus 5 over the x minus 2, and x cannot be equal to 2 or 7. Now, you might be saying, Miss Henschel, of course it's not 7. Um, well, 7 makes this denominator 5. So what the heck's going on there? It's the original problem. You are re you're referring to the original problem when you are finding your restricted values. All right? All right, next one, number 2. Okay, number 2, I have x cubed minus 4x over 3x squared plus 10x plus 8. All right. So again, for this one, I want to factor everything, right? Because I want to see what would divide out, and I want to get my restricted values before I divide out those giant ones. So here we go. x cubed minus 4x. Oh, doesn't that have an x in common? We can take out an x. We got x squared minus 4 over. All right, here we go. This one's difficult, you guys. 3x squared plus 10, or 3x squared is a 3x and an x. Keep in mind that the outside and inside has to equal 10x. The signs are going to be the same because it's plus 8. So 8, I'm assuming we want to use like a 4 and a 2. All right. Um, on the outside here, I have a 12x. And on the inside, I have a 2x. Can I make a 12x and a 2x into a 10x? Yeah. I can make it by subtracting 2. Minus 2 plus 4. And I'd ask you guys, if you're in front of me, what's wrong with this? I'll tell you what's wrong with this. This has to be a plus 8. These signs have to be the same. So this is wrong. Let's see if we can do this. And these are wrong. So let's take that. I had a 4 and a 2. Let's make it a 2 and a 4. On the outside, I have a 6x. And on the inside, I have a 4x. Can I make a 6x and a 4x into a 10x? You betcha. Make them both positive. And that works because I said it was positive 8. Right? All right. And then I'm hoping some of you are like, um, wait a minute, Miss Henschel. This can be factored too. That's a difference of squares. Isn't that an x plus 2 times an x minus 2? And I would say you are correct. So I'm going to rewrite all of this in factored form. It's x times an x plus 2 times an x minus 2 all over. We had a 3x plus 4 and an x plus 2. And some of you might be thinking, okay, do, does it matter the order? No, it totally doesn't matter the order. So the first thing I want to do is say what x can't be. So remember, your denominator cannot be equal to 0. 
So that means 3x plus 4 can't be equal to 0, and x plus 2 can't be equal to 0. I'm going to subtract 4. 3x cannot be equal to negative 4, and I'm going to divide by 3. x cannot be equal to negative 4 thirds. That's one of them. Subtract 2 here. X cannot be equal to negative 2. Now that means these are the two values, you guys, that make the denominator 0 in the original one. Now when we go back up here and we simplify, let's see what we got. Well, we have this giant one here, right? That's an X plus 2 over X plus 2. That's a giant one. Nothing else divides out. So it looks like in the top I have an X and an X minus 2. And it doesn't matter the order. The bottom I have a 3X plus 4. And keep in mind that your x cannot be negative 4 thirds or negative 2. That's my answer, you guys. Okay? There you go. All right, and then I'm going to get to my third one. I probably took up way too much room, but that's totally fine. Okay, third one is 2x to the fourth minus 68x squared plus 450 all over x squared uh, plus 2x minus 3. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I want to factor the numerator and the denominator first. Then I'll find my restricted values. And then I'm going to figure out um, what my answer is by dividing out common factors. All right, so the top guy, oh my goodness. we These are all super big, but I can take out a 2. This is going to be x to the fourth. Not a big fan of that. Minus, okay, 68 divided by 2 is what, 34x. And that's plus 250. Work for you? <coughs> all right. So then the bottom, this is going to be an x, an x. Factors of the 3 that add or subtract to 2 are 3 and 1. To make it positive 2, I would have to have, what, a positive 3 minus 1, and that makes sense. And then I'm hoping, oh, and I forgot, somebody would have stopped me. This is squared because that was squared. I did not take out a 2x. And I'm hoping somebody would say, Miss Henschel, we can factor this guy here. This right here can be factored. x squared, x squared. Let's give this a shot. All right, so factors of 250 that add or subtract to 34. Well, 250, and that's what I can think about. There's nothing in front. Thank goodness. Um, 250 would be 25, and I'll put this up here because I feel like I'll need the space down here. 25 and 10. So 25 and 10 would not give me 34, so that doesn't work. Um, let's see what else I have. Um, 250 divided by... Uh, is there a 9 in there? No. 250 uh, divided by 5. That's 50. 5 and 50. That's not going to give me anything I want. 250 did the 10. Hmm. Let's see here. Next, I'm thinking of something. And those 450. Oh, I, I messed up. Duh. 450 divided by 2 is 225. I'm like, I knew I made these problems and they were good. I'm totally sorry. Long day. It's before Christmas break. I'm, I'm kind of excited to get the heck out of school. All right. So I forgot. And some of you may have been like, Miss Henschel, 250 divided by 450. This is 225. Okay. Factors of 225. I would start with, I like 25. 225 divided by 5. Or 20, 225 divided by 5. 225 divided by 25 is 9. 25 and 9 is 34. If I make this a negative 25 and a negative 9, that gives me negative 34. Yep. And a negative 10 is a negative is a positive. Fantastic. Oh, my goodness. And then I'm hoping some of you said, this is why I knew I was wrong before, you guys. X squared minus 9 is not an X plus 3 and then an X minus 3. And X squared minus 25 is not an X plus 5 and an X minus 5. All right, so this is a lot of junk. Okay, the top. We had a 2 on the numerator. All of this factored right here became an x plus 3 times an x minus 3 times an x plus 5 times an x minus 5. That's all over the denominator of, wow, x minus 1 times x plus 3. Ooh, I like it. All right, now, next thing. Um, my denominator can't be equal to 0, so this guy can't be equal to 0. So x minus 1 cannot be equal to 0. And x plus 3 cannot be equal to 0. Add 1. And many of you guys don't need to do this. x cannot be 1 because 1 would make the denominator 0 here. Subtract 3. And x cannot be negative 3. Those are my restricted values. All right, let's go back to the original problem, you guys, and see what we got here. All right, so this plus 3 plus 3, that's gone. 
Oh, I was not nice on this one. There's nothing else left. We're going to have a 2, an x minus 3, times an x plus 5, times an x minus 5, all over an x minus 1. x cannot be equal to 1 or negative 3. That is our whole answer, you guys. And I am feeling pretty darn good about that. Okay, I apologize for the little glitch in that. I obviously can't take 450 and divide it by 2. Um, but that's it. And that is the end of this little video. Good luck.